The Hebrew Bible that we generally call the Old Testament is the root system of Christianity. To put it another way, Christian, if Christianity is the fruit, then the Hebrew Bible is the root. And when we look at that vast library of documents spanning perhaps even 2,000 years, a multitude of writers, a, a library of documents, we see some enduring principles that still exist today. So that's the root. We represent the fruit of it. Now, one of these, perhaps the primary concept is the idea of the holy and one ancient word, and that word is Kodesh. And the word means separate, separate. God is separate from humanity. So Kodesh is like a boundary marker. It's like a line drawn. This is, this is humanity. This is deity. And here is the line drawn. He is Kodesh or the mystery. The mystery that is God is separate from us. So Kodesh suggests a boundary marker of mystery or wonder and even fear if you have a line drawn across your page and then underneath it you have a question mark then over the top of it you have an exclamation mark we live in the question mark and over there is the exclamation mark all is question all is wonder that's the kind of separateness between one and the other. Now you can see this really powerfully if you read Exodus and particularly Exodus 19 and 20, the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. So there they are, the, the people of Israel are camped at Mount Sinai and the text basically evokes the picture of a volcano and it's rumbling and shaking and flashing fire. And the feelings of the people gathered around the base of the mountain dread that power and are overwhelmed by its proximity. They don't want to go any near it. It's just scary. And that's a symbol, a picture of God's otherness, God's mystery, where we stand in relation to it. So how can we approach such a one? That's the conundrum of Moses and his people in these ancient stories and the answer is <laughs> most basically it is uh, carefully <laughs> with caution with caution is it as if you were working in a nuclear power plant and you had occasion to go nearer to the radioactive zone the the nuclear core so you could do that, but you'd have to know what you were doing. You'd have to approach it with scientific knowledge. You have to approach it with the right clothes, the right gloves. You have to make sure that you are safe because you're going into dangerous territory. And this is the same as what was happening here as they approached the Kodesh of, of God. You, you see that enormous attention of detail with the priests, with the clothing, with the Ark of the Covenant and so forth. Basically he's saying, you need a fireproof suit to enter the fire. That's the primeval picture of the holiness of God. This is a scary place, get ready. But there's more. Don't forget that in a sense, God is approaching us as, as well as us approaching God. And he does so, or he did so, with a series of covenants. And the covenants, the word just means agreement, like we might have a wedding covenant or a, a house mortgage. You know, we sign, we agree, we have conditions, we come into an agreement together, a formal agreement together. Well, God had done that over the centuries with, with individuals. First, it was with individuals, like with Abraham or Noah. But now, in Exodus 19, it's collectively, it's with Israel. 
And these are rules. These are rules not just telling us what to do as if God is a, a bossy um, and critical spectator, <laughs> but how we live together, how we live collectively, how we live and share and give with one another and how we live together with God. And the famous line, you will be my people, Exodus 19 verse 6, is almost commonplace throughout the Hebrew Bible. And you might almost say, it's the point. It's the point of the whole thing. You will be my people. So does that mean we all buy fireproof suits? Just how does God live among us? How are we to be his people? Now, language evolves with culture. And Kodesh became not only a noun, but a verb. Or not just a, an adjective, but a verb. It didn't just describe. It enacted or it had enabled the enacting of. And the verb obviously meant make holy. And we have the word sanctify. And if you see that sanct at the beginning, that means saint. And if I means make, <laughs> make saints. How do you make? And, and, and don't be put off with stained glass windows and golden dimmer plates behind people's heads. It means how do you cross the line between the question mark and the exclamation mark? So things, these things are dedicated for God's service, like these, these plates, this, this, this ins, incense, this anointing oil, this ark, these men, these priests, these are special to God. They are holy because of their proximity to where God is in action. So they were described as holy places, this is the holy place. This is the holy of holies. This is the most holy. And so, and so it goes on. They're talking about that line. But the promise of Exodus 19 verse 6 was that a people of God, the people of God would be a nation of priests and wait for it. A holy people. A nation of priests. Now, that didn't mean an ecclesiastical hierarchy. It meant a collective body on fire with the presence of God. This is a big, big idea. And like all big ideas, it, it needs thinking about carefully. It's like an orange. It has multiple segments. So I'm just going to pick a couple of those. And here's, let's just name three separateness, separatedness, glory, and purity. Separatedness, we're separated. You'll be a holy people, separated, not, not like the others, separated unto me. It's not that I don't own the others. I have the cattle on a thousand hills, the silver and gold in a thousand mines. The earth is mine, says the Lord. Again and again, it points to in him we live and move and have our being, to take a New Testament picture of it. Mankind, humanity made in the image of God. There's a picture of expansive inclusivity, but he said, if, if, if you want to dwell with me, you're going to understand my presence and walk with me in mystery, awe and wonder and fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those things coming again and again and again. Then will you walk with me? Will you walk with me? Then ready yourselves. Come apart and be separate. Don't be part of something else be part of this so we have to have those things we have this collective vision and a, a separated a separated concept as well at the same time with god is another word for everything all of reality all of the flow of life 
everything is part of God. In him we live and move and have our being. But he calls us to be a people for him. And what does that look like? Well, the second word is glory. And that in its in its root, Kaboth, it means shining and the appearing. Think of Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration and they couldn't look upon him because he was shining. And of course, that's the sense of the presence of God. Think of purity, of cleanliness, not just outside, but really inside inside a pure blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god so there's three aspects separateness or separatedness you have been separated glory the shining presence of god purity the ethical morality of god you see immediately that these are all aspects of god they're not aspects of humanity they're aspects of humanity in the image of God. When we move into covenant with God, then these form our the parameters. They, they're, they're the how of our lifestyle. To put it simply, this is how God lives and we're summoned into relationship. It's all derivative from God. It's nothing in ourselves. It's all, all of it in him. When God called Moses in Exodus chapter 3. Do you remember? There was a, a sort of scaled down version of Mount Sinai. It was a burning bush rather than an exploding mountain. And he was led into relationship, into covenant and into service. And that proceeded through uh, an un unraveling of the mystery of God's name. He was led into the mystery. Who are you? Who shall I say sent me? Say, I am sent you. Who are you? I am that I am. So he was led into the mystery of God's name. But there was, with a, a single strange request, and that was, take off your shoes. Do you remember <laughs> he's he's there in the middle of the desert he's he the, the wilderness he's he's concentrating this is something new and unaccountable he ha already has a sense of mystery and awe and wonder he he's tack off your shoes now there's two ways of taking that comment the normal explanation is that it means basically show some respect who do you think you are? Show some respect. And that's the separateness side of Kodesh. But there's another side as well. And some scholars point out that it could also mean, come on, be at home, be natural, be yourself. Is that interesting? You know, we have the phrase, don't we? Kick your shoes off. Oh, come, please come in, come in, take your shoes off. So it's not a word of rebuke, but a word of welcome. And we see this again and again as well, particularly in the in the Psalms. Is it Psalm 27 when it says, uh, um, come, and, come and talk with me. And my heart replied, Lord, I am coming. You have this embrace, this intimate relatedness. Okay, and that's the intimacy side of Kodesh, the relatedness. And then God explains the terms of that relationship through his name. I am that I am. It means in terms of the Hebrew, which had a different verb system than we have in English. And so you can could say that it means I am who I was. And that relates to the faithfulness and the purposefulness of a God who is from, who is ancient of days. I am who I was. Then you have, I am who I will be. And that's the God of faithful determination into the future. I will never leave you or forsake you. And then, of course, it can mean, I am who I am. And that points to the eternal nowness of God. So 
whatever you're afraid of <laughs> if you are if you are if you are like me like most people you are bound up with guilt for the past and anxiety for the future just like moses was then the kodesh god meets us in the center i am who i am and of course that is the sacred name of of god and it is made up of two hebrew syllables yahweh and a, a rabbi I, I read this rabbi saying that they are the two syllables in the hebrew language that can be said without closing the mouth and they are intended to replicate breath. Yahweh, Yahweh. Isn't that amazing? They're intended to replicate the breath of life. Do you remember? God breathes in and life is formed. A living soul into the dust of the ground and he rises up and he breathes. The breath of God. And this is how Kodesh in humanity is possible. It is the eternal now presence of the Spirit of God breathing in. Do you remember that chorus just comes to mind where it says, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. And this is where it doesn't end, it's where it begins. And this is the flourishing center of the doctrine of holiness. God in us. Lord, we thank you for your word and we pray that you will minister it to our hearts, that we may come closer to you that we may hear your voice, that we may see you smile, that we may enjoy your presence and come to live our lives as worshippers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.